Hello all, this is the SAT practice test for uh, solutions for problems 23 through 38 uh, of the math test that comes with a calculator, thank goodness. So, uh, let's go uh, into this first problem. So the angles shown are acute and sine of A is equal to cosine of B. And if A is equal to 4K minus 22 and B is equal to 6K minus 13, what is the value of K? And this problem is really just leading you to plug and chug because um, I have tried multiple, multiple ways to do this, but without relating A and B into like a triangle, uh, it gets kind of dicey. So um, the best way is to plug and chug. And for the sake of time, I will just tell you that uh, the answer is 12.5 and I will prove it now because as you'd be going through, you would plug in this number to the K values because we're trying to find the value of k so that this statement is true. Um, and so you plug in that. So 4, uh, 4, whoops, on there. 4 times 12.5 is 50, and that's minus 22 gives us 28. And sine of 28 is 0.469, so we'll just write that down to remember. You have a much nicer calculator where you won't have to write things down in a graphing calculator, but for this sake, uh, I do not have one at the moment. Uh, and then we can see if 0.469 is equal to 6k. So 6 times 12.5 minus 13 is 62. And cosine of 62 is also 0.469. So now I've shown you that that's the answer, and let's move on to the next one. So, uh, Mr. Cole has been a beaker, has a beaker containing n milliliters of solution to distribute to the students in his chemistry class. If he gives each student three milliliters of solution, he will have five milliliters left over. In order to give each student four milliliters of solution, he will need an additional 21 milliliters. How many students are in the class? So we want to find out how many students, how many students, and he has given us a n milliliters, so we kind of want to relate these two things. n equals milliliters, and s equals number of students. And it really sets us up to write equations. Whenever they give you numbers, and he has five left over, or something like that, you can write a system of equations. Um, so, if he gives each student, the number of students, three milliliters, so three milliliters times the number of students, he will have five milliliters left over. So that's the total minus five, because five is left over, and so if that five was consumed in here, then he would have the full amount, but he didn't. So this amount is equivalent to this amount. So that's our first equation. And then our second equation, um, in order to give each student four milliliters of solution, so in order to give four milliliters to each student, he will need an additional 21 milliliters, and um, in addition, and that's in addition to the numbers that he has to distribute. So we can do n plus 21, because here he would have 5 left over if he distributed 3, and here if he distributed 4, he would need 21 more. So now we can solve this uh, for one of the variables, and we want to solve it, um, let's see, Let's we want to get s, so we want to plug in uh, we want to get rid of n, so let's solve this equation for n um, and plug it in there. So uh, n minus 21, so that'll be 4s minus 21 equals n. All right, so now we have that n value that we can just plug right there and put all this, plug that right there instead. So 3s equals that number, 4s minus 21, that value minus 5. Um, and now we start simplifying, so negative 21, negative 25, that's, that's just what that uh, adds to, um, or s, and we will, uh, I should have done this the other way to make it easier, but um, either way, minus 4s, um, and we'll minus 4s there, so that'll be uh, negative s equals negative 25. And, oh, my bad, sorry, that was a miscalculation. Six, six. Um, so that means that, uh, and a negative, and a negative, we can just cancel those 
ones out. So that is S equals 26. And that is the answer D. Uh, let's move on to the next one. And uh, feel free to pause at any time in the video and just go over what we've been doing again. Um, if you haven't done the problem, do it in your head or do it on a piece of paper before we work it out because um, it can really help you to learn where you go wrong and to recognize what you might be missing. Um, so a grain silo is built from two right circular cones and a right circular cylinder with internal measurements represented by this. Uh, above is not above, it's below. Of the following, which is close to the volume of the grain silo in cubic feet. So all we have to do here is find the volume. And we don't have an equation that will tell us the volume of the whole thing, but we do have equations that will tell us the parts, the volume of the parts. And we have one for cylinder, one for cones. And the one for cones, we're going to multiply by two um, because there's one on top and one on bottom, and they're the same cone. Notice they have both five foot height and a five foot radius. This radius extends all the way through the thing. Um, that's just a visual thing you have to see. Um, they wouldn't make it like seven. That would not make sense structurally. Um, so uh, for, a, uh, for a cylinder, it's probably spelled wrong, I don't know. Um, its volume is equal to pi r squared h, and this is given to you um, at the beginning of your SAT packet. Uh, very helpful. And then cone is volume equals one third pi r squared H. And we all we need to know is that there's two cones. So whatever this value is, whatever this value is, we just make another one of it. So if you really wanted to, you could just put it two thirds pi there, and the whole thing would give you the value of both. But we'll just do it this way for clarity. Pi r squared h. Pi is um, or r is five, so it'll be pi times r uh, is five. So five times five is twenty-five. Uh, twenty-five times the height is also 5, so uh, 25 times 5 comes out to 125, but I'll just write this here for clarity, so it'll be pi 125, just so that we know something easy to plug into our calculator. You can, do, you can kind of do that in your head if you know what 5 cubed is. Um, and then for a cone, 1 third, I'll circle that so we remember that that's the one, 1 third pi r squared h, so Oh, um, I've already messed up. So this is not uh, this is not five because I'm doing the cylinder, and the cylinder is actually ten foot height. So this is actually ten, and don't ever listen to me again because this is actually <laughs> it's actually two hundred fifty. Always put things down. We're never gonna do that again. We're gonna do all the steps now. All right. Um, so let's just work that out real quick. Um, pi times 250, just so I remember that, is 785. We'll write that 785.39. We only have to get so close because we already have the answers listed out. Um, and now, uh, 1 third pi r squared h, this h is 5, um, as you can see, because both cones are 5, and both radiuses are 5 for both things, so that'll be 1 third pi times 5 squared times 5, so that'll be pi 125 times a third, and then whatever that is, let's find that out. 1 third times pi times 5 squared times 5, just so that I don't go crazy. All right, so that's that. And then there's two cones. That was a cone because it, that 1 third distinguishes it. So now times 2 now we got both cones, so 785 plus 261.79, just about, you know, I should have rounded. Um, now we can add to that 785.39, and that gives us 104.7, and looky there, we got 104.7 as D. So let's go on to the next answer, or question. So uh, in the XY plane, the line determined by the points 2k and k32 passes through the origin, which of the following could be a value of k. Passing through the origin is very important. It makes this problem very easy because, you know, pass through the origin either this way or this way. And that means that there's no y-intercept. That y-intercept is zero. So that's like 
something x plus zero y equals. All right, yeah. So this is our this is gonna be like our uh, slope intercept equation, our basic one. Um, and so another thing we know that we can calculate the slope. We're gonna need the slope because we can use the slope to test if one of these k values works. Because if we plug in four, two, four, and four thirty-two, we can plug in two to the to a equation with a slope and see if it gives us four um, based on using four to get the slope. And how we use four to get the slope is we know y two minus y one over x two minus x one is the slope. So um, let's go ahead and substitute things in. We know y2 is 32, so it would be 32 minus, and then a number, which is, that is, this is going to be k. So we'll just write a k here to make things easier. And then um, this is also going to be k minus, and we have a 2, an x1 value of 2. So this is going to be our general thing that we're going to be plugging in these k's to. Um, in order to find the slope so that we can test them. So let's go. Zero. Um, 32 minus zero is 32 um, over zero minus two is negative two. That comes out to be a slope of negative 16. I'll write a zero here so we know. Uh, okay, um, that's not a male sign. <laughs> um, so negative 16. Now let's try out one of these points, two zero. So that's the one that we're trying. So negative 16 times two is negative 32. That is not zero, so that one does not work. 4, let's try 4. 32 minus 4 is 28 um, over 4 minus 2 is 2. 28 over 2, so that gives us 14. So that is our value that goes right there. So 14 times 2 gives us 28, but we are trying to find 4, not 28. So that one doesn't work either. Um, let's go to 8. So 32 minus 8 is 24. And that's divided by 8 minus 2 is 6, divided by 6, 24 divided by 6 is 4. And so our 4x, um, 2 times 4, uh, gives us 8. And 8 is actually the number that we're looking for. So double check, uh, 8, 32. So 8 times 4 is 32. And that gives us the correct answer. So the correct answer is C. All right. Um, Wow, we're getting dicey with this paperwork here. All right. So, a rectangle is altered by increasing its length by 10% and decreasing its width by p percent. If these alterations decrease the area of the rectangle by 12%, what is the value of p? So, um, this one sounds kind of dicey, but really all we're doing is just setting up kind of a system of equations um, or something like it. So. Um, we have the area of a, we're decreasing, we're finding out the area, right? So we know that area is length times width. And to make things easy, because it's just a rectangle and there's no real specifications, we can just make this whatever number we want, whatever what number we want, um, because that would satisfy the equation. Um, so to make things easy, since we're going by percents, let's do... L is 100, and W is 100. And that gives us 10,000. Big number, but it'll it'll be nicer for dealing with these. So these alterations decrease the area of the rectangle by 12%. So we have to decrease this by 12%. So, um, so we can do 100 minus 12 is 88. So that'd be 88% of that. So, um, 10,000 times 0.88, since we're doing percent, 8,800. So, 8,800 equals, and we just, notice, we just multiplied this by 0.88, and we're going to multiply each of these by something. So, the length, the, sorry, the length was increased by 10%, so we want to increase this by 10%. And 10% of 100 is 10, so we know that that becomes 110 equals 110 times. And now we're trying to find out the decrease of the width by p percent. So it's 100 times something. Um, and this number 
isn't going to actually be our percent. It's going to be what the like multiplied percentage will be. So it'll be like out of a like if we uh, take a hundred and subtract this number from that, then we will get what p is. Well, you'll see what it means. So um, I'm going to call this x, um, just so we have a variable that we can work with. So now we can start dividing things. Um, and so we can do divided by 110 give us 80. And we have 100 times something gives us 80. Um, and 100 times x gives us 80. Um, and really, uh, all we need, we, we can really just logic this out if we want to, but um, if we don't want to logic it out, um, then we'll just take 80 and divide it by 100. And then it'll give us 0.8. And so 0.8 is x. So it moved from 100 to 80. So we do 100% minus 0.8, and 0.2. So our answer is 20. And 20 is the final answer. Notice, if we, even if we tried to put that 0.8, they wouldn't have let us because they know that some people get tripped up with that. That's very nice of them.